A very good afternoon to all the delegates of 23rd Medicon. At the outset, I wish to thank the organizing team for letting me present my topic. Respected chairpersons, Dr. Divedi, Dr. Goel, and all the delegates, my topic for today's presentation is care of low birth weight babies. This is a very relevant topic because all the project hospitals are understaffed and apart from pediatricians, other doctors get to follow up low birth weight babies. And NTPC is having a young workforce. It is very straightforward. How do we define it? Any birth weight having less than 2,500 gram is classified as low birth weight baby. It accounts for around 30% of neonates in India. And what is the significance? LBW babies are more prone to malnutrition, recurrent infections, and neurodevelopmental delay. So directly, LBW will be causing 75% of neonatal deaths and 50% of infant deaths. So LBW babies have higher mortality and morbidity. Now, how do we classify? There are two types on the origin. One is preterm, that is less than 37 completed weeks. They account for one third of LBW cases. And the other one is small for date, or we say it as IUGR. This we can classify according to this centile, gestational age. Gestational charts are available, that will come later in the slide. From that we can uh, classify. They account for around two-third cases of LBW babies. Now the causes. Causes are again grouped according to the broad classification. First will be the causes for prematurity. Low maternal weight, teenage or multiple pregnancies, previous preterm, antepartum hemorrhage, induced premature delivery, but here the majority of cases are unknown. And once a premature delivery, it is always a prone to repeat premature delivery. Now the causes for small for date, they are the poor nutritional status of mother, hypertension, toxemia, multiple pregnancy, chronic malaria or any other chronic disease, and tobacco use. Now how do we identify the types? So if we suspect a premature child, then we have to date, we have to go for LMP, then there are physical features such as breast nodule, genitalia, soul creases, ear cartilage recoil that we can see in the slides coming up. A preterm will have an ill-formed breast nodule and term baby will have almost 2 to 3 mm breast nodule. A preterm baby will have a soul crease as shown, it will be plain and a term baby will have multiple creases. At least a term baby will have a single transverse, transverse crease at the front of the foot. This is the ear cartilage. You can see preterm babies are having loose with poor elastic cartilage, poor elastic recoil. Male genitalia will be having rugosities in term baby. In preterm females, the labia is uh, labia minora is exposed. Now we add how to identify the small for date IUGR babies. For that we have to use an IUGR chart. It is coming up in the slides. And the physical characteristics will be having emaciated look, loose folds of the skin, especially at the thighs, lack of subcutaneous tissue. There will be a lag in the, in the chest and head circumference. Head will usually be bigger by approximately 3 centimeters. This is the IUGR chart. You can see that uh, small for date below the 10th centile. And this again is classified according to the gestational age, preterm, term and postterm. This is a typical small for date term baby. Usually the um, preterm uh, term baby having small for date will have an alert look. Now low birth weight preterm babies are having many complications. Most of it are having a poorer prognosis than small for date babies. These are the complications 
बर्थ एसफिक्सिया हाइपोथर्मिया फीडिंग डिफिकल्टीज इन्फेक्शन हाइपोबिलिरोमिनीमिया रेस्परेटरी डिस्ट्रेस एंड रेटिनोपैथी ऑफ प्री मेच्योरिटी दैट इज़ अ कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ आर डी एस एपनिक स्पेल्स इंट्रावेंट्रिकुलर हिमोरेज हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया एंड मेटाबोलिक एसिडोसिस दिस इज जनरल गाइडलाइंस हाउ टू कीप द लो बर्थ विड वे बी कीपिंग वॉम एट होम वन इज स्किन टू स्किन कॉन्टैक्ट दैट वी कॉल एज कैंगरू केयर अदर इज द बेबी वॉमली रैप्ट अप You can see the temperature chart. The optimal temperature for even a term baby having normal uh, birth weight is around 28 to 30, and it drops. For VLBW babies less than 1.5, it is around 30 to 34 degrees Celsius. Now we come to problems of small for dead babies. Again, here we have birth asphyxia, meconium aspiration syndrome, hypothermia and hypoglycemia, infections and polycythemia. Out of these, uh, the meconium aspiration syndrome is having a worse prognosis because most of the patients at the time of admission, they are okay to start with, but they progressively worsen over the next 24 to 48 hours. Now, what are the indications for hospitalization? any birth weight less than 1800 grams or gestation less than 34 weeks they have to be kept for hospitalization and irrespective of birth weight and gestation any sick neonat this is a slide to show how well covered newborn baby how to keep warm at hospital uh, most of the cases now we use this radiant warmer because it is servo controlled and there is a temperature probe attached to the chest uh, skin of the neonat and it will automatically control additionally there is a additional safety margin you can set the temperature also these uh, incubators are not used nowadays because they are usually faulty and sometimes they catch fire also this is the same that radiant warmer now fluid requirements we have to start iv fluids for any weight less than 1200 grams and gestation less than 30 weeks after that we have to shift to gavage feeds if the baby is tolerating and after that we have to shift to katori spoon feed for weights between 1200 to 1800 grams and same gestation 30 to 34 we have to start off with gavage feeds after the baby tolerates or the sucking reflex is uh, proper we can shift to katori spoon feeding for lbw babies more than 1800 grams and gestation more than 34 weeks we can directly put to breastfeeding now how to feed we have to give at least 60 to 80 ml per kg and this we have to increase by 50 ml per kg these are about oral oral feeds this is uh, an image of a gavage feeding here it is shown orally what we prefer a nasogastric tube here care should be taken that uh, the milk flows it flows by itself we don't need a need a plunger we should not be needing a plunger to push the milk this is a katori spoon feeding now coming for fluid requirement the first day we have to give 60 to 80 ml per kg and daily we have to increase by 50 ml per kg up to one week we have to add 30 ml per kg for infants under warmer and we have to add 15 ml for those receiving phototherapy choice of fluid is uh, 10% dextrose for the first 3 days after that we'll be using 10% isop this is the same chart of uh, fluid requirement uh, babies having uh, weight in the range of uh, 1 kg to uh, 1500 grams the requirement is higher how do we assess the nutrition usually they will lose 1 to 2% of weight every day initially cumulative weight loss will be around 10% it will be more in the preterm baby by the 15th day they will regain their weight and after that they will continue to gain weight at the rate of 1.1 to 1.5% if there is no adequate weight gain we should look for causes cold stress is the number one cause other causes can be sepsis anemia there are some routine injections that we have to prescribe 
one of them is vitamin K that is usually given at birth. Vitamin A and D they have to be given after one week. And iron has to be started after two weeks. Now we have to be vigilant about the danger signals for which early detection is necessary. Uh, lethargy is one of them. Lethargy, refusal to feed. Hypothermia is a more sinister symptom in uh, babies rather than hypothermia, fever. Hypothermia, tachypnea, grunt, seizures, vacant stare. Seizures are again uh, not a typical seizure. Usually the seizures are subtle seizures like chewing of the mouth, fluttering of the fingers, abdominal distension, bleeding, icterus or palm sensors. If once it is decided, it, uh, the baby has to be referred. We have to give, provide life support. We have to shift with mother and adequate warmth should be given and there should be a referral note. There is no rule of the thumb for the prognosis but mortality is inversely related to birth weight and gestation and it is directly related to the severity of complications. Long term prognosis is good and usually uh, small four date babies uh, fare better than preterm low birth weight babies. With this, I finish my presentation. Thank you. You have addressed very important uh, subject which accounts for 30% of human population. Uh, as you have already said that 30% uh, population uh, neonates, they are uh, low birth weight. Mm. It means uh, among us might have been few of us low birth weight also. And 75% uh, neonatal deaths are caused um, because of this low birth weight. Low birth. This is among the low birth weight mm -hmm. susceptible people. So their care is of extreme importance mm -hmm. and uh, you have taken this topic, their fluid requirements and other things. Where pediatrician is not available, people can take care of their requirements and their tender care can be taken up. And uh, now I invite the questions from the uh, audience, if there are any. In NTPC population, most commonest cause is the heterogenic, because preterm, that group, preterm group, because the gynecologist and the obstetric indication, they are delivered before term. Preterm is the most common, prematurity, preterm low birth weights. We usually won't get to see small for date, mostly preterm. Today, um, uh, uh, you must be knowing that ki toxemia is quite common in mm. uh, also uh, you and me. Uh, we find, I think, maybe 5 to 10 percent of the population, obstetric population, in any functioning hospital. Which, yes, I'm talking of NTPC. It is not iatrogenic, you cannot say. You can say ki obstetric indication. Obstetric indication. Suppose obstetric mm. indication, she has the pregnancy has to be terminated. The iatrogenic is something <laughs> different. But other things you can say ki suppose severe toxemia, hypertension uncontrolled, 
and um, there is some inherent genetic component is uh, usually is not ki uh, ntpc people will not have so ha, ntpc people won't be spared law of nature will apply to everyone as you can so, see one third of the cases uh -huh. uh, they are uh, no no cause is assigned you can see this slide i'll just show for majority is unknown this one sir ha ah, in these cases majority the of uh, that uh, low prematurity preterm delivery majority of cases as uh, obstetricians will agree they are not known they have to deliver so on genetically uh, the constitution the flow placental flow is mm. so determined the baby is low birth weight mm. thank you dr rangnathan thank you sir thank you sir thank you dr rangnathan for taking care of the small children little children our future uh, may i now request our chairperson to please hand over a trophy of appreciation to dr rangnathan At last, I got an opportunity to honor our chairpersons. Sir, please allow me. and we are in the last slog overs i hope the last two batsmen will score as much as they can dr lankeshwar and for the chairpersons i would request dr ranjita sahu and dr s k pande to please honor us dr lankeshwar please good afternoon uh, respected chairperson uh, dr mrs uh, ranjita sahu dr sk pande dear colleagues and uh, friends today's my topic is on gingival bleeding prevention and treatment the gingival bleeding is very common commonly seen in uh, amongst the population so before going uh, on the topic we should know the normal structure of the gingiva Uh, the gingiva is nothing but it is a part of oral mucosa which covers the alveolar process of the jaw and surrounds the neck of the teeth the probing clinical depth the normal depth of gingiva is usually 2 to 3 mm the color is obviously coral pink and the margins are very smooth stipal the stippling is present on the attached gingiva the surface structure is firm and resilient the complaint from the patient is usually bleeding from the gums food impaction itching in the gums bad smell unpleasant taste etc see the normal versus abnormal uh, um, gingiva in the normal you will see color coral pink in inflamed one on the left side the redness and the swelling of the gingiva is also seen in this cross section you will see the etiological factor present the tartar formation along with the um, plaque the plaque we cannot see because uh, it is a bacterial layer and also see the gingival uh, pocket formation the inflamed uh, tissue 
and the alveolar crest bone loss. If you compare with the normal, uh, we do the uh, probing, uh, we have to just gently pass the probe to check the bleeding. Coming to the prevalence of the, the disease, such a high prevalence, this is study has been done in the Indian population. The dental care is 98% of total population. The gingivitis periodontal disease contribute 92% and the oral cancer 40% of total cancer. And this increase in the uh, prevalence is due to the lack of oral hygiene the uh, change in lifestyle of patient and oral hygiene negligence. The early signs of gingival inflammation, there could be a uh, gingival cravicular fluid production rate is increased. The gingival uh, bleeding also increased. Uh, it depends on the severity, function and ease of provocation. The presence of gingival bleeding is significant criteria for presence of gingival inflammation. The gingival bleeding appears earlier than the change in the color and the other visual signs of inflammation. The gingival bleeding is important diagnostic factor for planning treatment. There are different indices which are related to the assessment of gingivitis or uh, uh, bleeding gums. Here are the scoring given 1 to 3. 0 to 3, sorry, mild, moderate, and uh, severe uh, inflammation. And these are the, this is the formula for uh, gingival indices. The total score is divided by 4. 4 is nothing but the number of surfaces examined. And accordingly, the, uh, we can assess whether it is a mild gingivitis, moderate, or severe type. There is an in index for uh, gingival bleeding as well. The total number of bleeding surfaces divided by the total number of teeth surfaces. If the score is zero, then it, it is ideal one. The 10 percent or less, it is fair. And more than 10 is poor. The common periodontal disease in human are gingivitis and periodontitis. The main causative factor is dental plaque, which contributes to the periodontal destruction and eventually loss of teeth. So what is plaque? The plaque is nothing but it is a thin microbial tenacious layer which forms on the surface of the teeth, gums, tongue or prosthesis. It combi combines with the matrix of salivary glycoprotein and extracellular polysaccharides, hence it cannot be removed in rinsing or spray. The one gram of plaque contains near about 10 raised to 11 bacteria. The 98% of the plaque contains microorganism, that is aerobic, anaerobic bacteria, fungi, spirochetus, non-bacterial microorganism, includes the mycoplasm species, is protozoa, viruses, epithelial cells, macrophages, leukocytes, rest, rest 2% contains organic, inorganic matter and the water. Since we cannot see the plaque, we have to disclose the plaque by applying carbal pushin or basic pushin solution with the cotton. It will stain the plaque red color. Coming to etiology, local, it is divided into local and systemic. The local factor, the poor oral hygiene of patient. The plaque, calculus, material alba, stain. Calculus is a hard calcified uh, material which forms on the tooth or gums. The material alba is also microbial layer, thin microbial layer, which can, which can be dislodged very easily with spray. A stain could be tobacco or any color food stain is also etiological factor. Dental care is anatomic and developmental tooth variation, hyperplasia, uh, hyperplastic tooth or uh, torodontism or dense indent may result in accumulation of plaque and gingivitis. The frenum attachment, the hydrogenic factor, toothbrush trauma or overhanging filling. Overhanging filling may be 
because of the um, not properly counter filling may result into overhanging filling and accumulation of the plaque. The mouth breathing, because of mouth breathing, there is a decreased salivary flow, may result into gingivitis. The partial denture, the periodontal pocket. The periodontal pocket, po pocket is nothing but the pathological deepening of gingival sulcus. The sharp food, and hot food and chemical. The systemic cause could be diabetes, vitamin C, platelet disorder, vitamin K deficiency, hemophilia. There was a patient in Riyanagar, uh, I came across, uh, he had hemophilia, that boy, 10 year age. Just uh, the shading of the tooth, just, for, just because of shading of tooth, the gingiva was bleeding was very uh, spontaneous type of bleeding was there. And that patient was uh, first uh, underwent uh, factor 8, uh, uh, it was having factor 8 deficiency. It was controlled uh, by um, a denanin pack and was kept under observation. Uh, many, uh, many times he came to me uh, during exfoliation, every teeth he came to me uh, regarding bleeding. Leukemia, Kismas disease, def uh, deficient platelet thromb thromboplastic factor, multiple myeloma, the post rubella purpura, HRT, oral contraceptive, pregnancy, and drugs like anticonvulsant, like dilantin and phenytoin. The anti-hypertensive calcium channel blocker and immunosuppressant drugs like cortisone, etc. What happens in diabetes, you will find there is chelosis, the mucosal drying, cracking, burning mouth, the diminished salivary flow, the ulcer, uh, alteration in the flora of oral cavity, the increased rate of dental care, the gingiva, gingiva is enlarged, there, is, there could be abscess formation, beating gums and loosening of teeth. In vitamin C deficiency, scurvy, the capillary permeability is increased, the susceptibility to trauma, uh, tra traumatic hemorrhages, the increased susceptibility to infection, impaired wound healing, the gingiva is reddish swollen, the loosening of teeth are common feature. The endocrine disturbances and hormone fluctuation, the effect of peronodal tissue affects the peronodal tissue directly, modify the tissue response to local factor and produce anatomic changes in gingiva that may favor plaque accumulation and disease progression. In pregnancy, due to increase in the level of estradiol and progesterone hormone, the gingivitis increases in second and third month and decreases in ninth month of pregnancy. It accentuates the gingival response to plaque and modify uh, resultant clinical picture. Therefore, the severity of gingivitis increases. The increased bleeding on probing, there could be a discrete tumor like mass, we call it as pregnancy tumor. The microorganism dis uh, increase in number are, uh, is uh, nothing but the P intermedia. Smoking, the numerous studies show that the current cigarette smoking suppresses gingival inflammation response. And there is increase in gingival bleeding on probing who quit the smoke, smoking. And this survey is done uh, in third uh, natural nutritional examination survey. The puberty gingivitis, the pregnancy gingivitis, menopausal gingival stomatitis are associated with physiological hormonal changes and characterized by non-specific inflammatory reaction leading to marked hemorrhagic tendency. Female sex hormone is considered as an initiating and complicating factor for several type of gingival diseases. In HIV, oral candidiasis, the hairy leukoplakia is the most common lesion and been found in 90% of AIDS patients. A linear gingival erythema and gingival bleeding is positive in HIV patient. Oral contraceptive aggravates gingival response to local factor. When taken more than one year, increases periodontal destruction. Leukemia, the leukemic infiltration results into gingival enlargement, bleeding oral ulceration, infection, gingival is bluish red, cyanotic, tenseness of gingival margin, 
the gingiva is partially covered the crown of the teeth. The ingestion of metals such as mercury, lead, bismuth, arsenic, chromium may result in oral manifestation caused by either intoxication or absorption. This is a drug-induced uh, hyperplasia caused by dilantin therapy. Investigation, complete blood count, urine test, OPG, CBCT. The treatment uh, and prevention, the treatment of underlying systemic cause, the therapeutic, you may go for pressure pack or adrenaline pack, vitamin C tablet or injection, chromostat can be given. The soft tissue phase, we can go for scaling, root planning, surgical phase and maintenance phase. In soft tissue phase, scaling and root planning, either we can do manually or use scaler. In scaler, there are two types, sonic, ultrasonic scaler. The sonic scaler, the speed is 1800 to 6500 cycle per second. Whereas in ultrasonic scale, it is 18,000 to 50,000 cycle per second. And nowadays, we use this piezo scaler. The ultrasonic scaler can be used surgically or non-surgical cases or therapy. But the disadvantage of the ultrasonic scaler, you cannot use in a patient having cardiac pacemaker or aerosol products because of the aerosol production, in, for example, in HIV and hepatitis patient. Scaling and root poly, uh, planning reduces bleeding and probing depth and gain clinical attachment. In surgical pace, we have gingival curettage, gingivectomy, gingivoplasty, periodontal flap, bone graft. The gingival curettage is nothing but it is a removal of uh, chronically inflamed granulation tissue that forms in the lateral wall of the periodontal pocket. The indications are moderately deep intrabony pocket. Aggressive uh, flap surgery is not advisable due to systemic disease. This is a technique we use for uh, curettage. The lateral wall of uh, the pocket is curated under local anesthesia. A gingivectomy could be uh, surgical, electrosurgical, uh, laser, chemosurgical. In surgical Either we go for, uh, we first go for pocket marking and papilla preservation flap. In electrosurgical, the advantage of electrosurgical are the adequate countering can be done to control, control hemorrhage. The disadvantage of electrosurgery is cardiac pacemaker. We cannot use this irresponsive changes to the bone or unpleasant order. Uh, this, uh, this we mark the pocket, pocket depth by pocket marker and uh, we uh, give a bevel incision at 45 degree to the angle of the, the, uh, the long axis of tooth in gingivectomy. Laser, the advantage greater hemostasis, bactericidal effect, minimum wound uh, contraction, the disadvantage is unacceptable carbonization and major thermal changes. Damage. The chemo surgery can be done with 5% para formaldehyde and potassium hydrochloride. The disadvantage of uh, this chemo surgery is depth of action cannot be controlled and gingival remodeling cannot be acceptable. Gingivoplasty, there is no added advantage of gingivoplasty as far as the bleeding is concerned, but uh, it, uh, it, it can be done in uh, gingival cleft. Uh, gingival crater formation and gingival enlargement. The periodontal flap, it is nothing but the resection of gingiva and mucosa surgically separated from the underlying tissue to provide visibility and access to the bone and root surface. So there are types of flap, full thickness, partial thickness, displaced, non-displaced, conventional, modified with man. And this is a flap, uh, incision for flap surgery the internal bevel incision, the crevicular and the interdental incision. The releasing incision depends on the, the accessibility and the area, the length of area to be operated. The maintenance phase is an important one. 
let us see what is plaque control. The plaque control is nothing but it is a regular removal of dental plaque and prevention of its accumulation on the teeth and adjacent gingival tissue or surfaces. The, the plaque control is effective way of treating, preventing gingivitis and it is critical part of all the procedure involved in the prevention of periodontal disease. The good uh, plaque control facilitate health, healthy periodontium and prevents to decay and preserve oral health for long time. In plaque control, we have got the mechanical aids like toothbrush. It could be manual, uh, different types of, uh, depending on, upon its thickness. It could be soft, ultra soft, medium, hard. The power toothbrush is indicated only in children, adolescent, physi uh, physical uh, and mental disability, the hospitalized patient, the fixed orthodontic appliances. The disadvantage is only the cost. The brushing technique, the, no, the normal brushing technique we advise is physiological brushing technique method, which it involves uh, four steps, 45 degree angulation to the long axis of tooth, then um, for upper teeth downward movement, for lower teeth upward movement, the third step is uh, clockwise, anti-clockwise, and the last is uh, brushing the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. And in the last, you have to uh, brush your tongue as well. Dental flossing. Dental floss could be thin, unwaxed type, is uh, usually advisable. It could be monofilament or uh, polyfilament, and both are equally effective. The interdental brush or toothpick is, uh, can be used. Uh, in interdental brush can be used in uh, the, uh, the in diastema cases where the the space between tooth is little bi uh, bigger one the tongue cleaner steel plastic or brush usually we don't recommend it, um, tongue cleaner uh, steel tongue cleaner because it has been reported that the cancer of tongue is been reported the patient using vigorous uh, tongue cleaning with steel tongue cleaner this is a flossing. This is a regular floss, uh, prefabricated floss. Coming to the dentifaces, three forms, paste form, powder form, gel form. The paste uh, form contains abrasives like silicon oxide, aluminum oxide, granular, polyvinyl chloride, water humectant, soap, detergent, flavoring agent, therapeutic agent like tricosan, copolymer, fluoride, coloring agent and preservative. The tooth powder contains about 95% of abrasives, hence usually we don't recommend. The pyrophosphate is a anti-tartar. It can be added to uh, the, the paste form. Uh, and it has been uh, seen that it reduces uh, the, uh, uh, the calculus by 30%. The gingival massage. It increases only the epithelial thickening, uh, the increases keratinization, increased mitotic activity of epithelium and connective tissue. We can go for uh, oral irrigation using pine 2 chlorhexidine gluconate, may be used for irrigation subgingivally. Mouthwash, you can use 0.2% chlorhexidine gluconate, betadine preparation, menthol, thymol preparation, or triclosan preparation. The complete, you should have a complete gum care solution for a um, healthy gingiva or periodontium. The regular visit uh, to the dentist after every three months for a children and after every six months for an adult is must. And one should be under plaque, complete plaque control therapy. Thank you.